Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're looking at the Triumph Trophy 1215 on the 2013 model. What a big girl. There are several in this range. GTR 1400 Kawasaki, lovely big girl, not as many gadgets. Pan-European, I do like them from the front. I hate the bum of them. The low lights, looks like a ped. I don't know why, I just don't like it. BMW RT 1200. Pretty much, so look, I say it came out the same factory, same little bits and bobs, just a boxer engine, this is the speed triple. Let's have a look round it. I mean, just coming up to her is massive. You can't help but look. Now, video after this, I have lowered her. My feet are now touching the floor, otherwise it would be a little bit too tall for me. And if you watch my other videos, the BMW on the Yarmouth Seafront, I mean, it's a steering lock, I know, but I'm still tippy toes. I'm now flat footed. So check out the video after this one and you'll see this video on how I did it. Back to this Triumph Trophy. There's a Rydies as well. I rode here and I'm gonna stick this after this. She is a beautiful girl. It does come with panniers. They're at home, I know. A massive, ginormous back box, all keyed alike. This one came with a tank bag as well, which is massive and a sat nav placement, and I've got the sat nav at home. I like the fact the panniers haven't got a big racking system. The just size of this back box. You can fit two helmets in here, and I've got all my gum for done in the other videos, that tire, tire inflator stuff in there, waterproofs, and my jump pack. That's worth watching that video as well, by the way. Now, when we come to gadgets, this scores massively. We have, Automatic screen. Oh yes, radio. But that was I was going to show you. USB and a 12 volt charger. Got next video as well after this. I'm going to be putting a hardwired crash cam on here, front and back cameras, and I'm going to put it in here. Wiring, but it's going to be hardwired in. It's going to stay with the bike. I like this little pocket. Without the ignition on, you cannot get in here. But in there, power point USB, power point number two. PowerPoint number three. PowerPoint number four. Four PowerPoints, that's more than most cars. So while riding along, you can charge your phone, both phones, heated everything else, and the alarm. Heated grips, two stage on the handlebars, that's lovely. Heated comfort seats with two settings for the rider. Heated rear seat and with two settings that a passenger control. I often have heated seats in cars, I turn it on and don't tell the wife, I think she's weed herself. I think it's really funny. Childish. Moving on to the controls. Sitting here, every information possible on this dash. All controlled by here. You can, oh, it just goes on, honestly. This is the radio settings. Screen, this is massive, it goes right up here. The heat grips, I said, memories. You do have to read the book. Normal controls are here, okay? I have high beam, low beam, flash, adjustable levers. One added feature on this bike, it's got the radio because it's the SE. Standard one, take this seat up, which is the key. Take this seat up, and under here is a lockbox. Five litre lockbox. Because it's got the radio, it's enough to get some money and so on, and you can lock it under there. So basically, this is an amazing touring bike. If you think this bike should have panniers, back box, and a tank bag. That is a hell of a lot of storage. You can go away from this bike. Still very hot. Let's look at the dash. Press once, turn on. This is the adjustment complete. And you've got your miles per gallon and you can do so much more with this bike, telling you all the information, comfort mode, the sports mode, one helmet, panniers and so on, tire pressures, you name it. And then you've got the other button here that adjusts it as well and telling you what you've done before, trip one and trip two. Speedo's really good. <clears throat> as I said, this has got the Garmin 660 sat nav. As I mentioned, it's got... Post Malone, better now on Radio 1. The radio. But as you're here, while riding along in a minute, my only complaint, they've got noisy engines. I phoned up Triumph, had a service 800 miles ago. And I said, it's a little bit noisy. Common fault for these. Uh, the 2012, 2013 models upwards, they are noisy. They're fully synthetic oil. 
he said, leave as it is, do not put thick oil in it, which I was going to do, I was going to change the oil. He said, don't do it. The oil, bloody alarm. The oil, which is here, he said, um, just in there, you'll see it. No, very common. Now, you can bring it back, because a lot of owners came back and said, I can't even hear the radio over the noise of the bike. And it is true, it is noisy. And I was worried about opening her up. He said, leave it as it is. If you want to come back and have a look, there is a slight adjustment they can do. I'll see how I get on. Personally, once I know it's not damaging the engine, I don't so much mind. And the radio is a little bit of a gimmick. I was up to 70 mile an hour the other day and I could still hear that really well. Passenger said it sounded a bit like underwater, but hey, it's a gimmick, isn't it? Really happy with it though. This bike also has cruise control. I haven't used it. I like my wrist. This just hovers your wrist. Why not in on on eBay? It's just to see so you don't have to grip it all the time. A big 190 rear tyre. Looks a little bit VFR-ish, but to be honest with you, the BMW, they look the spit of each other, they really do. Except the exhaust. Rocket launcher exhaust. That's a lowering kit video, hopefully you're going to watch that one. I was worried about the TSE system and about the stand. You can still get them on both, so I'm happy. But I was worried about the side stand, it's lower. I'm now flat-footed, I'm really quite happy with that. There we go, Triumph Trophy 1215. Let's have a slow look round her. Twin shocks at the front, 120 front tyre. She handles really well. It is a triple engine in there. They might do some cleaning. 9,000 miles on this clock, 2013. I was in the other day in the rain. Wasn't prepared for it. This huge bit here stopped any rain getting on my legs. I was bone dry. I was wearing an open face helmet. And I did get a little bit of rain flicking through, but it was hammering down and I was actually quite dry on a 10 mile ride. You really can't knock that. I like the fact that the tank bag just clips in here and clips in here. This, I suppose you're wondering what it is. Well, some of you can see it's a charger. Why it flashed green all the time, I don't know. But I do put it on charge. Can get other exhaust for this and they're very cheap to be honest with you. 150, 200 pounds, get you a nice exhaust. But I don't see the sense in it. If I want to listen to the radio, why have a noise exhaust? I love the single arm at the back. And it is shaft drive, which is always handy. Nice little look all round her. If you want a bike that's got presence on the road, you can still get through traffic. Well, I can anyway. Then this baby is the bike for you. Let's go for a quick ride east and tell me what you think. We just had a nice look around her and now we're going to go for a little rideies. Um, I've stuck it on a chest plate today. Let's see how this goes. Eight and first helmet and I've got the microphone right beside my mouth. Hopefully you can hear me as well. The only moan I can really give about these bikes, the engine is really quite loud. And it's common with these 12, 15 engines for the same the triple engine as the Adventure. They're just noisy. They handle it really, really well. I mean, you can bank wherever you want to on these bikes. You're gonna have a nice little ride. Very good dash seat in front of you. Does all the bits and bobs on here. I've got it in comfort and I've just lowered it, which is the next video you're gonna see. And I'll tell you what, it makes a hell of a difference. Ooh, BMW. And that's the other version, this one actually. That was an RT BMW 1200. I don't love the boxer engines, although people do say they love them. Just the camera a little bit. Turn right here. And it does go some if you really want it to. Radio. Yeah, let's put it up a little bit. Oh yes. It's really cool and it goes up and down as your speed increases. So when you come to a traffic light, it's not flaring out, which is cool really. For a big girl, you can still get through some gaps. And this screen, look at it, goes right up in the air. You don't need it that high, but I'm hoping you're not getting blown about. I should have put the closed helmet on, but I've got an open first helmet today because it's warm. And hey, I like it. One thing you don't know, should ride in motorbikes, this car in front of me, is a weed smoker, because I can smell weed really badly. 
think they forget that with a little car and they think, yeah, I can do my weed in the car. God, it stinks. Braking's good. Front and back. Round the bends. Round this bend. I'm going to go round this roundabout to show you how well it banks. Nice dry day, 20 odd degrees. And let's move out of here. Here we go. I'm in third gear, so I'm not racing around here. But look at this banking. Remember, this is a big old bike. 400 odd pounds. Look at that. You can get your knee down if you wish. Coming off here, hand out, and away we go. Nice sharp bend. Easy to came right. Back brake harder than front brake. I must admit, the back brake's not got a lot on this one. Acceleration, let's see it does. Oh, it's got a bit of a grunt to it. Let's slow her right down now. You don't feel the weight of her once she's gone past 15 miles an hour. I'm quite happy. Not sure about this harness though. Breathe in, breathe out. Big old load to my left. Always worried you're going to pull out, but you didn't. Thank you. Now I could just blow this car away if I wanted to. But again, it's about cruising. 300 miles you can do with this baby. That's brilliant. And away we go again. Now I adjusted the rear suspension, as you're aware, to make a lower for me. And I have to say, it has not affected the handling. It really did worry me whether it's going to do that or not. And it hasn't. I hope you're up. Come on then, let's see what she does. Still goes some, you know, look at that. And there we go, 70 mile an hour. Stick gear. I have got the screen up quite a lot. Do you notice the radio goes down and fourth gear? Go round, quick shuffle, quick back out again. Buses love doing that, don't they? There's nothing coming and they pull away, but they sit there for ages while the traffic is coming. You know they do it purposefully, don't you? I know they do it purposefully. Right, let's indicate right here. Give it this bloody bus. They've got cameras on them as well now. Make sure you can see there. It's because car couldn't see you, you can't see them. And here we go. As I said, they're in comfort mode now. Sport mode's a little bit harder. Still good. And radio, come on! <laughs> and there you go. Quick riders as well. What do you think? I've had it two weeks now. I'm actually enjoying her. I haven't filled her up. 300 miles. I've got 70 or to do. You know, Jexes and so on like that. You fill up every 100 miles. And when I say it's a proper tourer, I don't mean your, your sport tourers, because they're not tourers, they're just sports bikes with panniers on, still 100, 150 miles for you need to fill up again. I'm not talking about adventure bikes, although I do like them, a couple of hundred miles on them, even the GSA one, a little bit more. I'm talking the big girls, 300 miles before you need to fill up. That's all out of Bristol and halfway back again. You just can't knock that. And this really does do good miles to the gallon. I'm averaging about 60, 65, doing 70 miles an hour. Brilliant. Only fault, noisy, good thing now, lowering kit. You know what to do, like, share, subscribe, keep watching my videos, two more after this one, you take care of yourself. Oh, by the way, the DVR one I'm gonna do, for the hardwire, I'm gonna do a long video and show everything I'm doing on there. You take care of yourselves.